Hi everybody, this is just a quick review of the TS Optics 9mm off-axis guider that I'm planning to use with my Celestron 9.25 Smith Cascarain telescope. Here is the off-axis guider, here is the EOS specific um, adapter ring that allows it to be attached to the camera. This is the 1.25 inch adapter that connects to this, this area on the off-axis guider. This is an adapter ring that is used to connect um, the, to the back of the Schmidt Cassegrain telescope and converts the standard SCT two inch connector to an N48 connector. Then this is a 360 degree 48 mil male to female adapter that allows the whole thing to be rotated once um, the uh, whole assembly is attached to the back of the telescope. So here is the off-axis guider itself. We have the prism here, and the prism is attached to this post, which is secured by this bolt, and this can be moved in and out in order to make sure that the uh, prism doesn't get in the way of the light going to your camera sensor. We've got three securing bolts here, and if we flip that over, um, the EOS specific or any other adapter slips into this um, recess here and then these screws tighten down to retain that in place. Now I am using um, an EOS specific ring and that point there is the thing that you use to actually locate this on the front of your cam and EOS camera and if we look at the uh, profile here we can see that it's, um, it's conical and what we do is we need to slip that into there like that and you can see that there are there's a space there um, and it's important to get this in the right place I've seen some um, coverage that says that um, you can locate the off-axis guider in a number of different locations but I found particularly with my rig that the other way you can do it is just like this where the camera is here and the off-axis guider is as it were at the bottom of the camera so if we were to locate it and um, configure it this way, then the prism is looking down the telescope into the table as it were. Uh, this here is where the um, pin on the release catch on the EOS camera would be, and therefore this is a sensible place to uh, locate it. So if we just line things up like that, make sure that's nice and central, and then secure these three screws, not too tight. Right, that's then ready to be put on the front of the EOS camera. However, due to the way we need to assemble all of the various components onto the telescope, we can't actually have this secured before we actually finish the assembly. So we'll go ahead with a few more steps first. In order to make it easier to show you how the um, off-axis guider is connected to the back of the scope, rather than have a whole um, bulky 9.25 SCT scope on the table here. We're just going to uh, assemble everything onto the back of this um, Celestron uh, focal reducer. So this would be what's sticking out the back of the telescope. Um, it's a two inch, I think two inch Smith Cassegrain type connector. So as um, the two inch SCT is not much of a good connector for um, uh, various other adapters. First thing we need is this Schmidt Cassegrain to 48 M48 adapter. And what we'll do with that is we just screw that onto there. Okay, so we now have that there. So in order to allow us to um, rotate the camera and off-axis guider to get the best framing for our astrophotography photos, we actually need a, a means to ensure that we can actually rotate um, everything with respect to it, the other things on the uh, optical train. So this is a 360 degree M48 M48 adapter and this ring in the centre which has an M48 thread um, can rotate within the re outer retaining ring which also has an M48 th thread, this one being male, this one being female. And if we just release these screws, then we find that we've got a conical um, 
ring there, which means that when we actually do slacken this off, we can be sure that our nice expensive camera and other sensors don't fall off the back because it's, it's secure but can still rotate. The next thing we're going to do is to configure the off-axis guider um, to make sure that the prism doesn't impinge on the camera sensor. So here is the off-axis guider. Here is the EOS specific um, adapter ring. So normally I wouldn't open the camera facing upwards just in case dust got onto the mirror onto the sensor. But there's the uh, mirror and that red dot there needs to match with that red dot there. So we place that approximately like that and then spin it. We can see that at the bottom here we've got a gap and that's the place that the um, the prism is going to sit. So making sure that these screws are not impinging on the um, the recess. We then need to turn it over, pop it onto the adapter ring like that, and then we need to make sure that the um, that the there we go. We can see that at the moment. Um, let's just tighten that up just to make sure it stays where it's supposed to be. We can see that um, at the moment the prism is not going to impinge on the sensor so we can actually push it further in and further in further in. I think that's about as far as I'm going to go and then we can tighten that up right and the further within the, um, the, the optical root that that prism is the more light we're going to get into the prism and up and out into the guide camera. Now that we've got um, the uh, post of the off-axis guider prism in the right place um, we need to disassemble the uh, off-axis guider and we'll see why shortly. Close that off, take that off, just pop the lens cover over the top to keep any muck off the sensor. Okay so the next stage of the, dis of the assembly is we have the focal reducer that's emulating the back of the telescope. We have our 360 M48 M48 adapter and we have the off-axis guider. Um, on the off-axis guider in here we have an M48 female thread. On um, here on the 360 degree adapter we've got a M48 male thread and on the inside of the ring uh, we have um, on the conical ring that allows us to rotate we've got an M48 female thread. Now, the first thing we're going to do is loosen these bolts pop out the conical ring right and we have a bit of a problem coming up here because the M48 female thread on there which needs to mate with the M48 male thread on the 360 adapter we can actually try to um, thread that on if we find that the bolt impinges on the bottom plate of the off-axis guider. So the only way we can really get this attached to this is to actually remove these three retaining bolts. Right. Then we can thread, thread this on here see that once it's actually assembled um, this the bolt that would go in this hole won't actually be able to go in because it's going to interfere with this plate now that's what this is for this is a grub screw but it's the same thread as this bolt here um, and we'll put that in so we just disassemble this keeping careful note which is the hole into which we're going to put the grub screw To impinge a little way in, so I'm going to do it like that. Now reassemble these two. Right, M48 
and get it tight, not over tight, but fairly tight. Oops, I pushed that in the wrong way, shouldn't have done that. Okay, so just to make sure that we can still put the conical ring in, because it's important that this does uh, all work together. You can see there's, the, there's the, um, the side of the ring that I'm putting in. Pop it in there, that still rotates nicely. And then put these two back in. So we now got the front face of the prism facing down this way. This is where the adapter ring for the um, EOS camera will go. Right, and then, tell you what, we'll just pop that out again. Right, then this side of the um, M48 female thread goes onto the back of our telescope. Like that. Okay, so we can now We've got our 360 degree rotation ability, but we can now lock it down. And we know that because of that third bolt, which has been replaced by a grub screw, this whole assembly is nice and tight. Okay, so this can be retained. And then the next bit is that, which is the 1.25 inch eyepiece adapter. So we'll just pop that onto there. Oops. Okay, and if we were to bring back the camera, let's get that out of the way. Get that out of the way. Right, there's the off axis guider. We can now slip that over there. Oops. Right. We have another slight challenge. There we go. Right, in as much as this bolt here needs to be slightly tightened before we can spin the off-axis guide around. Right, so that's the position we want it in, right at the bottom of the camera. And we just tighten each one of these. Oops, this screw here and a screw here. Oh, that screw, that screw there. assembly. So we have the focal reducer, we have a uh, Smith Cassegrain 2M48 adapter, we have a 360 degree retaining ring, we have the off-axis guider, and on the inside of that we have the um, EOS specific uh, connector for the um, TS Optics off-axis guider, and that is our entire um, off-axis guider optical train. Um, and then the only thing extra we need is this, is our um, ZWASI 120 Mini, and that just pops in there, and the sensible way I've been told is it needs to sit like that. Okay, so here we have the fully assembled um, camera, uh, off-axis guider, and associated um, adapters, and the 360 degree rotation ring, all attached to the back of the um, Celestron focal reducer. So the next thing we're going to do is attach the whole of this to the back of the OTA, the optical tube assembly. So to do that, we're going to loosen the two aluminium screws on the 360 degree adapter. Like that, pull off the um, focal reducer. We turn the camera over to uh, make sure we don't touch the, the prism. So here's the focal reducer. Here's the lens cap for it. Okay, here's the OTA. Um, this is the um, the optical back at the moment, uh, the, uh, the adapter for an eyepiece. And then here we have the Celestron focus motor. So the first thing we're going to do is, I've already unscrewed the optical back, so we'll just pull that off like that. <coughs> Here is the um, assembly with the uh, focal reducer, the SCT to M48 adapter, and the uh, conical ring from the um, 
360 degree adapter. So we'll take the lens cap off, pop it on there. Oops. Producer needs a clean by the look of it. Right. Snug that down like that. Okay, then the camera. So here we have the camera. Whoops. With the uh, off axis guider. So we'll just turn the camera over and uh, let's plonk that onto the top. down so it's not going to fall off and then as you can see we can turn the camera and the off axis guider and one of the problems that we have here is that the off axis guider camera actually does interfere with the Celestron focuser so unfortunately I can't get a full 360 degree rotation um, but that's pretty good so um, I think we'll call it quits. Thanks for watching.